Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to cut out textures inside Redshift. This is a straightforward technique that every Redshift user should know. However, it does come with one major gotcha that we will talk about in part two. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we are talking about how to cut out a texture with inside Redshift. So a lot of times it'll happen that you'll be given a logo and it'll come with a pre-built uh, alpha channel within it and you just want to apply it and you want to cut it out. Um, so how do we do that uh, with inside Redshift? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, it's definitely different if you're a C4D user than what you're used to. Um, Redshift handles alpha. Um, you actually have to manage it a little bit more than you would inside C4D. Um, so uh, what I have here is I have um, a, just a Nike logo that has a pre-built alpha inside of it, right? So it's already cut out. Um, and then I've also have a separate black and white mat um, that we can also use for the alpha. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump in and see how we do this. So I'm gonna switch over here to C4D and let's create a new material. And then I wanna step inside this material and I wanna bring in these textures that we uh, just saw. So let's go, let's bring in a texture and then let's navigate to, let's just go with our Nike RGBA uh, image. Do we want to copy it? No, we don't. I wish they would stop asking me that forever. Um, okay, cool. So we have this and let's just put it on, right? So I already have a card set up, so I don't waste your guys' time. So we have our image and we want to cut it out, right? We don't want this black here. So unfortunately, with inside, um, with inside Redshift, it doesn't automatically recognize that you have alpha. You have to actually tell it and point it to it and so it can understand how to do it. Now there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to this, but I think as a whole, uh, I do wish that it would just automatically do it. Um, Cause nine times out of 10, I just, I just want to cut out whatever. But as of now it doesn't do it. So how do we do it? So what we need to do is we need to tell it what the alpha is. So um, if you're familiar um, with alpha, uh, 255 white is pure uh, opaque and um, zero black is going to be transparent, right? So what we need to do is we need to grab another texture image and let's come in here and let's point it to our Nike Alpha, right? And the Nike Alpha is nothing more than a black and white image, right? So white, white is opaque or solid and black is transparent. So that's all that this is doing. So let's go ahead and bring this in. Nope, we don't want to copy it. So we will label this so we can tell easily. This is our alpha. And then let's just pipe it through. We see we have that. And then we're gonna quickly call this beauty. That way we don't get confused. All right, so how do we do this? So let's take our beauty and let's go ahead and pipe the beauty into a diffuse, diffuse color. Okay, and then now what we want to do is we want to take our, our luminance, essentially, our black and white mat, and we want to have that drive our alpha, right? Because like, once again, white is, uh, white is opaque and black is transparent. So let's go to overall op opacity color, right? And then let's go ahead and see what this does. And you'll see that right away what it does is it cuts it out um, because we are telling it that uh, that's the alpha. So that's one way to do it, but what if what if you don't want to actually create a separate alpha mat? What if you're like, all right, cool, whatever, I have this and I know it has alpha in it, how do I extract it? Because that's a pretty reasonable question. So what you need to do is you need to go to the color splitter. So the color splitter is, don't be scared of it, it's very simple. All it is, is it's just saying, I'm going to break out your channels, right? So every image that we see at least in our world of like uh if you're not in the print world uh it's rgb right so red green blue makes up everything and then we also have our alpha channel so all this is doing it's saying like okay well let's take this and let's split it out so let's go ahead and bring our beauty we're gonna take our beauty image and then we are going to take our beauty image and put it into the input and then from there we're going to say for our out that we want to export only the alpha, right? So then if we only export the alpha, then we're just basically saying, hey, I know there's alpha in this beauty, just export the alpha, right? So we're saying, we're saying I want this to be the diffuse color. I know I know, I like this as diffuse. And then I wanna split out the alpha, right? I wanna, I know there's alpha in here. I wanna input it in here and I just wanna export the alpha. And in from that alpha, I wanna go into the opacity color. 
Now, this is the way that I would prefer to do it. This is, for me, I prefer this if it's built in. So this is this is how I would recommend to do it. Um, also, don't forget to come in here and enable your gamma overrides. That way you get your correct color space. Um, and that's it, it's simple as that. Now, having said that, there is, um, there is a couple gotchas. And the main gotcha is if you actually have a lot of these cut out, you can run into problems um, down the road with how they, uh, yeah, how they render basically. Um, so what does that mean? So like basically if I had like a hundred of these, you're going to see what's going to happen is they're going to start clipping. They're going to start cutting each other off. And why is that? Well, in part two, I'm going to show you why that is um, and, uh, and explain to you exactly how to fix it, right? So let's go ahead and jump over to part two. This is part one. If you just if you just want to cut something out, that's how you do it. Very simple. Put in a color splitter, export the alpha, you're done. Um, or have a separate alpha texture that drives it. Um, so this is part one. And then for part two, I'm going to show you if you have um, lots of repetition, for instance, grass or something that, or leaves or something on a tree that you know is going to be cut out like a zillion times. How do you deal with that? And it's it's not exactly as simple as you would think. Okay, so let's go ahead and start part two. Okay, so in part two, we're gonna talk about how to deal with multiple copies or instances of this texture um, and kind of things to be aware of uh, with inside Redshift and how it manages them. Um, so first of all, uh, I wanna thank Vertex Library on YouTube um, for informing me of how to do this because this is something that I uh, ran into um, of an issue on a project that I was on and I didn't know how to solve it. And um, after watching his tutorial on how to do it, uh, yeah, I, uh, I figured it out. So um, I wanted to pass the information on to you. So thank you very much to that. And uh, so what do you do? So what do you, what are the things to be aware of? So first of all, um, you should know that with Inside Redshift, there is a ray trace depth, right? It's like how many times that reflections, refractions, and transparencies will penetrate something, how many times they will actually happen, right? So what does that mean? So what that means is like if you have a hall full of mirrors that are all reflecting onto each other, in theory, that'll just go to infinity, right, in the real world. But in reality, in the reality of CG, you don't want that to happen because it's going to kill your render time. It's going to be like reflection, 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 reflection. It's going to try to calculate like forever. And so you want to cap that. You want to have it say like, OK, cool, like I get it, but I don't need to have that many you know, like, I don't know how you would put it, like computing. I don't need you to compute that many times. Um, so you, you basically, you cap it, you limit it. Um, and this is true also for transparency, right? So you limit your transparency. So it's like, if these were panes of glass, how many times, how many times through these panes of glass can I actually see, right? Can I see a hundred? Can I see 50? Can I see two? Well, right now we can see through 16, panes of glass, if you were to think of it that way. I can see through 16 windows before Redshift's gonna say, nope, I'm not gonna do any more because you're gonna kill your computer. So this becomes an issue when you're dealing with transparency, right? So like if I have, if this were grass, then I have a problem because if I have uh, 10,000 pieces of grass that are filling up a field that are all cut out through alpha, well, I've got a problem because it's gonna stop at 16 and that's not gonna work. So what do I do? Well, um, what you do is you actually create a sprite. Now, a sprite is basically a copy or an instance of a texture that uh, the renderer doesn't have to compute, right? So if you're familiar with like uh, Particular, for instance, Particular has sprites. And basically you just say, okay, cool, I want this. I want this texture to be repeated like a million times, but you only have to look at this one and just repeat it. And you don't have to think about it. It's always gonna be the same. Same is true in here, right? So we need to create a sprite. So what I have here is I have just a circle that's cut out and it's being repeated, it's 24 times, being repeated 24 times, okay? So let's just look at what happens when I start to move around this. So when I start to move around, you're gonna see what happens is it starts to get chopped off. And it's like, well, why is it getting chopped off? Well, the reason why it's getting chopped off is because what I mentioned earlier, after 16 of these, it's gonna start chopping, right? After I look through 16 of these textures, it's gonna start chopping it. And that's exactly what's happening here. So if I come in here and I put this to two, guess what? They're all gonna go. <laughs> and then 
the only time they're not going to go is when it's not looking through too. So you'll see like there's a sliver right here. Let me go to uh, hidden line. There's a sliver right here that's also right here that isn't being covered by these two. But basically, if it's being covered by these two, it's not going to go. So if I if I put this to five, and then I come over here, you're going to see after five, one, two, three, four, five, it starts to chop. Now, just on the side note, this is really good to know um, just for your daily workflow, right? Like, do you have something that needs to be refracted six times or can you can you put this down and still get the same result and really heavily speed up your render time? Chances are you probably don't need them this high. Now, these are just kind of the default settings, but just something to think about where it's like, do I need them to be this high? So I know that if I go to 24 here, then I will not clip, right? Because I have 24 of these and I'm set to 24 in my, well, I guess you could call them limitations almost, right? Like what, what's it gonna limit it at? So let's just render this and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna, now these are not like amazing settings. They're just kind of defaults. Let's go basic, I'm at, I'm at four and 16. So it's really nothing's happening here. Um, so let's see how long this takes. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, this took 17 seconds. All right, cool. So the reason why um, the reason why it's taking a little bit of time, and you'll understand this just a second, is because of our optimization, right? 24 is can be quite a bit. So how do we fix this? Well, let's create a sprite. So let's come into our let's come into our material and let's just type in sprite. And within our sprite, um, we need to tell it what the sprite is. So again, if you're familiar with particular, this is just like piping in your texture. So let's just say that this material is my texture. And then the other thing you need to do is you need to tell it where that texture lives, okay? So I'm gonna just come over to my circle texture here and I'm gonna go to my sprite. And under path, I'm just gonna paste this, okay? And then sometimes it has trouble refreshing, so I'm just gonna stop it and then start it again. And then let's just let's just try to render this again and see see how it renders. So that took way too long. Why is that taking, ah, <laughs> okay, so I didn't have it plugged in. Sorry about that. All right, so let's, now let's try again. Let's go shift R. Now let's see how long it took. But for the record, it was like 16 seconds. So let's just see what this does. So now we're down to nine seconds. So nine seconds isn't bad. And if you can imagine if you were to multiply this by however many thousand, like those seconds are gonna turn into minutes and hours. So most importantly, let's come over to here and let's just see what we are dealing with here. Let me turn this off and on again. It gets a little funky sometimes. So you, sometimes you, if you're not getting the results, you just have to turn it off and on and off again. But now you can see if I come here, and you know, this is another thing too. Let's just turn this down to two. So let's turn this down to two. Now, because we don't need 24, let's just see what happens now with our render time. I bet it's gonna be a lot faster, right? All right, so we're at six seconds now. So we started at 16 seconds, actually 17, I believe, on the first one. Then we went to nine. And then when we turned our transparency down, we even got to six. So if you really start thinking about this, this is huge because you just it's compounding, right? It would multiply, 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 and then all of a sudden you're in hell. So yeah, um, really this is only, I think I think most people this isn't gonna be something you're gonna be dealing with, but I th it's one of those things where if you do have large amounts of these, just be aware it exists and this is a way to do it. Um, some people argue you should always just do this. I'm too lazy to always put it through a sprite, that's just me. If I'm just doing one texture, I just do one texture. It's up to you. Um, in any case, uh, just know it exists and that it can be super helpful and save you a lot of time. Um, so cool, that's gonna do it for today and I will see you on the next one.